In most Fire Emblem games, legendary weapons are powerful tools that you use sparingly. However, in Fire Emblem Fates, all weapons have infinite durability and legendary weapons have a reputation for kind of just being bad. So why is that? I'd say that there's a couple of main reasons. Reason number one, basically nobody can ever use them because of the way that the weapon rank system works. In most Fire Emblem games, characters can eventually reach S rank in at least one of their available weapon types. However, in Fire Emblem Fates, even setting aside that the vast majority of characters join with low weapon ranks, only very specific classes are ever capable of reaching S rank. Most classes are either capped at either a B rank or A rank weapon level. So to utilize a legendary S rank weapon in Fates, you not only need to participate in a lot of combat or use armor scrolls, but you also need to be in a specialized class. Each weapon type has only one non-DLC class that can reach S rank. And in fact, these classes are all infantry units, and most of them can only use one weapon type, making legendary S rank weapons literally class specific in a way that requires a lot of planning and commitment. There are exactly zero mounted classes and flying classes that can use S rank weapons, meaning that if you want to use them, you are sacrificing mobility. For example, the only non-DLC class that can get S rank lances is the Spear Master, which very few characters can even class into. Only Berserkers can use S rank axes, only Sorcerers can use S rank tomes, only Swordmasters can use S rank swords, only Snipers can use S rank bows, only Master Ninjas can use S rank hidden weapons, and only Maids and Butlers can get S rank staves. This means that you are locked into this class and more likely very specific characters if you decide to try to use legendary weapons. Reason number two, you only get legendary weapons at the very end of the game, limiting potential use. In the Conquest route, you only get the legendary weapons Excalibur, Argomir, and Bifrost in chapter 26 of the Conquest route, the literal last chapter before the end game, meaning you have no time to use them. In the Birthright route, you get the Chakrim in Chapter 24, and the rest, the Pursuer, Water Wheel, and Hot Curry Blade in Chapter 25, which is also very close to the end of the game. Only in Revelation do you get these weapons earlier, but even then you only start getting them in Chapter 20. Reason number 3, their stats and effects just kinda suck compared to other options. And they pretty much all have downsides. For instance, the Hagakuri Blade is an s rank sword with 18 might that has strength for the next attack, which is a very potent downside. Compare this to Ryoma's Rajinto, a personal weapon that he can use from the start with no investment, which has 11 might and plus 4 strength, in addition to 1 to 2 range with no downside. Ryoma is most likely to be your main sword master, and if you have several, the only one to get s rank swords. Thus, the Kagakuri Blade is pretty much completely useless for him. The Argomir and the Water Wheel also have the same having strength downside. The Excalibur, Chakra, and Pursuer instead have a defense, resistance, and enemy doubling penalty, which isn't too bad in comparison, but their benefits generally aren't worth building towards specifically. You can also forge iron weapons with no downside fairly easily and cheaply. In fact, you might often be better off selling the legendary weapons for 5,000 gold specifically so you can forge more iron weapons. This is not to mention that you can get other useful weapons like Brave Weapons, the Sword Catcher, Pike Ruin Club, and Axe Splitter for much less class and weapon rank investment. I suspect that the reason for the design of the legendary weapons is that, with the removal of weapon durability, they cannot be limited to use weapons that are generally good in all situations. But the way that the color design means that they're very hard to use for any real benefit. The existence of powerful personal weapons and forged weapons just kind of crowds them out. However, on the flip side, let's consider whether they're potentially useful. 1. They might be useful if you're using generics or captured units. Captured enemy units will arrive with maximum weapon rank. So if you capture an enemy berserker, spear master, sniper, sword master, maid, master ninja, or sorcerer, they can use these legendary weapons right out of the box. 2. Generics with lower strength or accuracy might be able to make more use of the high might and high accuracy because they may be less capable of using other weapons like brave weapons as effectively. Their ranged legendary weapons also make it easier to double, so that is also potentially very effective. 3. 
it's possible to mitigate the downsides of legendary weapons. The strength having downsides of the melee S rank weapons can be mitigated by dual striking. If the S rank weapon wielder does a pair up attack, the strength penalty will go away if it's active, but not activate if it's inactive. You only get the penalty if the legendary weapon wielder is a leader in the pair up. The defense penalty downsides for the ranged S rank weapons can be mitigated by trading the weapon away or just protecting the character that uses the weapon. The best use cases for legendary weapons is likely to help you wipe out an enemy group so they cannot retaliate and take advantage of the downsides, which is generally something that their high might and accuracy facilitates. Anyway, that's it for now. If you have any thoughts on how to use legendary weapons, or if you've used them and you'd like to talk about your experiences, let me know in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time with more Fire Emblem stuff, probably. That's all I do.